and Welcome back to Dr. Walls and Friends, and we are here with Richie Allen Woodman. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and I'm the one thinking this. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm sitting here with, I feel like I've been to the library. I love it. <laughs> These are now. Are these all the books that you have written? These are currently all the books. We have nine, basically nine titles that we've uh, that we've published and written this uh, recently over the last two years. And there's one that's hot off the press, like bouncing hot, in my hot, head. Hot, off the press. Hot potato hot. Are we 96 hours in yet? <laughs> yeah, it's about four days ago. Four, okay. days, ago. four days ago, four days ago, it just got just got uh, released. Four days ago, it's on sale on Amazon and Kindle and beyond Barnes and Nobles, and then it'll cross us probably in the next month or two. So. Wonderful. So tell people a little bit about this book. Uh, this is a great book. This is Bushido Soul of Japan. And uh, this book was actually written in 1904 by Dr. Inozo Mitobe, and it's actually one of the preeminent authorities on the code of the samurai in feudal Japan, uh, which had just ended about seven or eight years prior to the Tokusan writing this book. Okay. And uh, the most fascinating thing about it is he, he, he not only talks about the precepts and the rules, Governing the samurai, the ethics, loyalty, truthfulness, veracity, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, he also actually equates it slightly. He had, uh, around 1902, he had come to uh, Pennsylvania, Quaker Town, which is actually where I live now, and, and actually um, did some learning and training with the Quakers there. With the Amish Quakers, and he, and he realized that there was a actually quite a, a, a big similarity in lifestyle between the, the Quakers and between the, the Quaker and the Samurai, which is the simplicity uh, and simpleness of the nature of their living, yes. and, and and the ideology of what the Samurai was doing, which is also simplicity yes. and simple, you know, be, being being of natural life, yes. not you know not acquiring goods and exactly. things. So, yeah, so, so they had, there's a lot of other similarities that he, that he equated in this book. And a couple years ago, I actually uh, got the rights to publish the book, and I translated and re redesigned the book and re-edited and, and put a biography about the uh, about the author originally in there. And, and it's really good artwork. And, and How so, fascinating! It's a big one. Well, I had I had you know it was jumping off of my lap here. Now tell the people you have a long-standing history with Japan. I do. I was uh, actually in Japan for. Well over 20 years. As, as a kid, I was there for, for a number of years as a child, and then uh, came to America. But then, 1998, I decided uh, I just wanted to become a student again. I had, uh, I had I had opened up schools here in America and was teaching regularly. I just felt like the, I wanted to get back to my home and so okay. learn more. So I decided 1998 to go back to Japan and uh, started training again at the Hamid Dojo. So I studied. Uh, Shotokan Karate originally, and, but also I, I've taken up uh, Aikido, which is the, the world's only most passive martial art. Now what does that mean? Aikido actually, Aikido actually, Aikido means to harmonizing, harmonizing your mind and your body with the universal spirit of ki, or, or energy, life energy, and that's that's really how we think about it. I like that. Yeah, it's a very different, it's a different approach. Yes it is. Yeah, it actually comes from the Daito Ryu Jiu Jitsu mind, okay. under uh, Grandmaster Mori, who was at Yu. Shiba, um, and he founded the art, and I studied with his grandson at the, at the Hongo Wow. Now, one thing that I noticed is your dress. Can you explain to our audience members? Well, it's not a dress necessarily. Dress? It's actually, <laughs> my, it's this tr traditional hakama. It's the traditional, you know, iwagi, jodagi pants. And jacket and belt, of course, but, but the the pants are called hakama, and and, and they're uh, very traditional to the feudal period of Japan. And the samurai is a class nature, and and in a way, there's a couple of things. Some people say, well, it hides your feet, so people can't see you, and or or it says, you know, or it was that of the samurai, you know. But it was actually just a traditional guard at that time period, at the turn of the century. Oh, okay. It's Shut what up, samurai did, did but it was actually what any gentleman uh -huh. of any status in Japan had actually went with his tradition. It's the Hakama. Okay. Yeah, the Hapi. Oh, wow. So they, they incorporated part of the arts. Now, you mentioned the samurai. Do you know anything about the sword? Uh, sort of. I've done semi Ido actually. Last year, I was actually uh, called in to do some uh, to do a translation work for a visiting Japanese master. Nobody spoke Japanese, and he didn't speak English. So, okay. so I came in uh, with the Yahagi Sensei, uh, thanks to my friends in uh, Bayonne, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They invited me, and they had me come over, and uh, and uh, so I did some uh, some Ido, which is a sword technique. 
And in Japan, you know, as a kid, I, I, I took some kendo and did some EI. Wow. So now that you're back in the States, I mean, we have a wonderful collection of books here. You can hold some so people yeah, this can is, see. Uh, Michael Deepest quote well, you interviewed earlier. Yes. Uh, he and I uh, got together about a year ago when I came back to America. Uh -huh. And uh, we wanted to make a book uh, that would help schools beneficially help them manage, market, understand their business resources for themselves. Okay. We're not going to do it for them. It's not an association. There's no fee. There's no software to buy. There's no billing process. It's just something that they could literally use as a Bible, step by step, say, here's how you can choose a location. Here's how you can set up your dojo. Here's different approaches to advertising, to marketing for free, okay. getting the newspaper and TV stations to come and do something at your school, to advertise and promote your school. Right. But the book really concentrates mainly on how to build your martial arts school as part of your community. And not as just a separate business I'm trying to make money off of, but yes. literally if you can tie your school into your community, listing your students who are on the honor roll, being involved in community projects, cleanup projects, you know, with your martial arts students and, you know, in your dojo as a name. People recognize that, that you are part of their community. Yes. And people who are in the community always want to associate themselves with the businesses that are in their community. Exactly. And a part of it. So, and this book actually demonstrates and teaches you you know, again, advertising, marketing, merchandising even, and just management techniques that would just help you run a school efficiently, effectively, and successfully. Wonderful. Now you are very community-minded, and when I say community, I think worldly for you. And you travel. I travel a bit. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and you also go around and you do presentations and seminars? I, I give presentations and seminars. Um, I, I've been to India a few times and did India, of course, in Japan, all over America last year. I was on the road for about seven months. Wow. Uh, different city, almost every single week. Wow. So. Uh, we did everything. We crossed America like three times and went to Puerto Rico and New York and Michigan, California, Colorado, Florida. This is pretty Dallas, Texas, everywhere. So now for people, if they would like you to come out and speak to them, what types of organizations do you go to and what types of topics do you talk about? You know, I, I, I'm really a martial arts instructor. I'm a teacher. And I'm, willing to, so I'm willing to show anybody anything that they want. I've been, I've been really honored by such having such a wonderful opportunity for like, training in Japan for as long as I did, 20 something years. Um, being a certified six don, and here in America, it's not very high because everybody's like eighth, ninth, tenth degree black belt. And, you know, some are, some aren't. But, but as a student, I trained, and simply this was what someone else has decided that I'm, I'm worthy of this title, Renshi, yes. which is a title that has to be actually licensed. I can't accept it by okay. myself. Somebody has to give me the title. And tell people, what does Renshi mean? Renshi actually means polished master. Okay. Actually, and it doesn't mean I'm a master. It just means I've mastered my particular craft and art, yes. and I've polished it to a extent that's a little brighter than the Okay, okay. So that's uh, for both of you. Know, uh, kind of. So if you would like this polished master to come out and teach you some things or speak to your organization, how can people get in contact with you? Um, easy enough. They can always contact me at senseiallenwoodman at yahoo.com or senseiallenwoodman at gmail.com. Or um, also you can reach me on Facebook. I'm always available on Facebook. I chat with everybody. I, I have, I don't know, almost a thousand people on Facebook okay. now. Okay. So, and uh, I, I publish my books through uh, Sidekick Publications. And I write uh, weekly column through WorldwideDojo.com yeah. as well. So I'm pretty active. And You're pretty out there. <laughs> You're pretty Communication. Out. Communication. Okay. Always, it's, a, well, it's a big, you know, sh sharing, sharing. Not only my life experience and what I've learned, but just sharing art with other people. Yes. Communication for me is it's a huge, it's huge. And tell us a little bit about Worldwide Dojo before we. Worldwide Dojo is actually uh, Dana Stamos uh, is the, the owner and operator of WorldwideDojo.com, which is the world's largest martial art website. Uh, but she also owns USA Dojo, the martial art directory.com. These are all, all websites under her. But it, it's a huge resource for people to, to literally just draw from. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's great. All right. So, as you see, we have nine books here. 
and they can all purchase these books where again? Uh, they're on Amazon.com, Kindle. Uh, we just did a, uh, an agreement deal with uh, Barnes and Nobles that we're carrying the books within the next month, and they'll be available on the Nook at that point. Great. And or you can just contact me, and then I'll sign one and send one to you if that's what you want. Oh, wonderful! Thank you so much for spending this time with us, and I know you're getting ready to go do a seminar yes. and educate some more people. Okay. I got that. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. And we'll see you again real soon on Dr. Walls and Friends.